Welcome back to where you live in Rocky Mountain House. We are right in front of the uh, frozen North Saskatchewan River and I am now joined by Dean Schwader of the town of Rocky Mountain House Economic Development Officer. Now you have a brand new motto here in the town of Rocky Mountain House called Challenge Your Inner Explorer. I love it. Where did you come up with it? Well, it's our new tourism regional uh, motto, I guess. Uh, it's a joint effort between the town of Rocky Mountain House, Clearwater County and the village of Caroline along with the three chambers of commerce in Nordegg, Village of Caroline, as well as in Rocky here. Fantastic. Now, how did the idea come about? What is it inspired by? It's inspired by David Thompson himself. Uh, he was uh, an explorer that came to Rocky Mountain House 200 years ago, and we thought we'd tie into his theme of Dave, David Thompson country. Uh, he, was a, he was an explorer that uh, came out to the area, and uh, he had some hardships uh, exploring the area, and we figured Challenger Inner Explorer was a great fit because when people come out here, we want them to challenge their own Inner Explorer by doing activities in the area. And there's many ways to do so. Uh, there's no shortage of them, whether it be the summer months or the winter months or anything in between. Let's start off with summer because we did see earlier the uh, video that was done by Rocky, the, the town of Rocky Mountain House where it shows how you can challenge your inner explorer in the summer. What is there to see and do in the summer months? Yeah, the David Thompson Country Regional Group uh, developed the, the video for the summer and there's lots, lots to do in the, in the area. Uh, we're big for camping, ATVing of course, but we also have hiking trails that people can come out and enjoy, as well as the North Saskatchewan River. We get a lot of people uh, enjoying the water uh, river that leads through Rocky Mountain House. Uh, so it's a great uh, area for people to come out and enjoy all types of activities throughout the summer. Also, if you wanted to go way back in time, there's lots of opportunities for horseback riding, which I think would be a really unique way to uh, challenge your inner explorer definitely, as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, horseback riding is big in the West Country. Uh, the scenery is great when people are, are on the back of the horses uh, touring the West Country. So horsebacking is definitely a nice uh, way to spend your afternoon. Unfortunately, that is, well, I'm sure it's an option, but we're certainly not going to try it right now in the winter. The winter months kind of change things up a bit for the Regional Tourism board, board. What is there to see and do in the winter months here in this oh, we're region? We're fortunate enough that we have lots of snow in the West Country as well as in Rocky. Uh, snow building, of course, is big in our area, as well as dog sledding. We have a dog sled operator in the area. Uh, there's snowshoeing trails. Uh, there's uh, cross-country skis, uh, skiing in the area. and. Uh, just if you just want to go for a hike in the in the winter, that's allowed as well in the West Country. Fantastic. Now there are a few uh, not so well known winter uh, subjects that you can enjoy here, including ice climbing and uh, winter biking as well. Those are unique. Yeah, they are quite unique. Ice climbing is quite popular out in the West Country. Uh, there's a couple operators that will take you out to ice climb. And uh, with that, uh, it's fun for the whole family to enjoy. Now let's change pace a bit and talk about the arts and culture scene here in Rocky. It's quite prominent. Why don't you talk about a few things that go on uh, throughout the year or that you'd see if you walked in town that are worth mentioning? Well, in April and May, there's a local uh, Northern Crossings music and, and theater group, and they've been in town for more than 25 years. And they put a play on each year. And this year it's a Little, little Mermaid. And it's uh, local actors and singers that to participate in the show and uh, it's great for the whole community and we get a lot of people from central alberta coming to rocky for that specific shows there's also a fantastic arts studio tour in the summer which is great mm -hmm. but those are only a few of the many different year-long uh events that go on here in rocky mountain house right. why don't you touch on a few that uh, people are definitely going to want to mark their calendars yeah for? we fortunately or we do we do have a lot of different activities or events throughout the summer uh and winter but mainly the summer uh starting in first weekend in June, uh, we've got the Rocky Pro Rodeo. Okay. And they also have Chucks and Chariots that, that participate that weekend. But then we go into the Marketplace on Main, which is our, we're going into our fifth year this year. And we close down Main Street and we invite vendors onto Main Street. It's a big marketplace. Uh, we average between 75 to 80 vendors and we have live entertainment as well. So we do that every Thursday from June 29th to August 31st, as well attended. Is that not just an artisan vendor, but also uh, farm to table type, yeah. type situations? Far, farm to table, um, home-based businesses come out with their products. Uh, like I said, it, it's a wide variety of different uh, uh, products that people can purchase uh, when they're on the street. Fantastic. Now, uh, Canada Day is going to be a big one this year. Mm -hmm. uh, what does the town have prepared? Well, we actually are working with uh, the Canada 150 Committee. Uh, they were uh, lucky enough to get a grant from the federal government to put on a, a canoe race. 
the reenactment of the 1967 uh, Voyager canoe race that left here and went down to Montreal. So we're reenacting that race. Uh, it's a 23 day race, I believe, and it leaves July 1st from uh, our National Historic Site. Then throughout the rest of the day for Canada Day, we'll have live, live entertainment activities for the whole family to enjoy. And uh, of course, we end off with fireworks at 11.30. Uh, moving on into many of the other events that are here, we have the car show, the antique days, and of course the ever popular Battle of the Rockies. Oh yeah, that's uh, quite popular. It's their fifth year or sixth year for that, and uh, it's uh, the last leg of the uh, World Professional Chuck Wagon Association. Uh, so it's a big event for our area. It brings in a lot of people that follow the Chuck Wagon route, and uh, it's a big event for our, our community, and uh, we appreciate them uh, using our community for that last stage. What an exciting opportunity for people to come into such a historic town and enjoy such, uh, I would say, his historic entertainment when it comes to the chariot races, for sure. Fair enough, fair enough, yes. Now, you personally, what do you love about living in Rocky Mountain House? Well, it's a great place to live. It's uh, a small town feel. Uh, I, I came from a small town in Saskatchewan, and uh, I really enjoy living, living in Rocky. I've been here 25 years now. I've seen a lot of changes, a lot of positive changes that Rocky Mountain House has done. and. Rocky Mountain House continues to make positive changes to, to better the community, uh, either for live, work or play. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dean, for speaking with us about all the different fantastic ways you can challenge your inner explorer. Joining me now on Where You Live here in the town of Rocky Mountain House is Greg Joyce of Parks Canada and we are at the National Historic Site. Why don't you explain the historical significance of where we are right now? So the, uh, the area we're standing in, or the grounds that we're on now, are the National Historic Site. Uh, it's a protected ground. It's where the first forts were built here in 1799. So in 1799, Rocky Mountain House was built here uh, by the North Northwest Company. And then six months later, the Hudson Bay Company came in and they built Acton House, which was the second fort that was built here. And there's been trade and community gathering and gathering of all Indigenous and First Nations here since, uh, since then. Fantastic. Now, uh, what specifically is here? Why, um, all we see is the backdrop, but what's all on this land? So uh, you have the archaeological remains of, the, of four forts that were built here between uh, 1799 and 1875. Uh, those are the significant reasons for us, uh, for our commemoration. Uh, in, the, uh, in the Northwest Company Fort as well, David Thompson uh, was posted here for, uh, for a number of years during his career as his map maker as he, uh, as he uh, mapped the, uh, the Westward Way. Uh, we have a visitor center here and inside our visitor center there's a gallery and the gallery has a number of artifacts from the area from the ground. Uh, in that gallery we also have a Métis exhibit, uh, Fiddles and Sashes. We also have a virtual reality exhibit which is new this year just starting up. So uh, the, in our theater of our visitor center you'll be able to put uh, the virtual reality headsets on and it'll transport you back into 1799 between that period 1799 to 1876 where you'll be able to go to each of those forts. We've rebuilt them in a Minecraft-like world. Wow. So we're thinking that's going to be a great experience for, for, for all. Like when we piloted it, there was young children from five, six-year-old to 75-year-old people as well. And everybody uh, took away their own experience from it, but everybody, it seems to be like it's a very, very good product. Uh, over and above that, we have walking trails, we have hiking trails, we have interpreters in costume like you see here today. Uh, they're cooking bannock, making trappers tea every day. There's a number of various programs that we have. We have uh, um, uh, blacksmithing, we have uh, Métis cart building, like you see here we have a, an individual here who builds uh, Red River carts, Métis carts. Um, we have interpreters uh, from Métis Local 845 who are in costume and they do, uh, they interpret uh, the period of when the, the Métis were here helping the fur traders and meeting with other Indigenous uh, groups in the area as well. Obviously a very interactive place to be. Uh, what's the community connection? How does the community get involved uh, when coming to the National Historic Site? So we have a number of partnering arrangements uh, with a number of community groups. The Confluence Heritage Society, uh, which is a nonprofit group, uh, and their, their, their reason for being is to promote uh, Western history. Uh, so we partner with them and uh, here on site they do a David Thompson puppet show every day, uh, which tells the story of David Thompson and his wife Charlotte Small and the story of the forts and westward expansion. We also have a partnering arrangement with Métis Local 845 and that's a local uh, 
uh, Métis uh, group, nonprofit group again, who work under the Métis of Alberta. And uh, they do our educational programs on uh, Métis interpreters in costume. Uh, they do a lot of Métis different cultural, traditional types of, of, of games, of, of, uh, of, of uh, hide scraping, of making drums, hand drums, and, and, and all kinds of different things like that. Uh, we also, for our special events, uh, have a number of partnering relationships <coughs> with uh, the town of Rocky Mountain House, County of Clearwater, uh, to do our Canada Day. Our Canada Day is a huge event. Without participation of the community, of these outside groups, we'd never be able to pull the Canada Day off that we do here. So while you mentioned uh, all the Métis influence that this place has and all the different uh, community connections and that, we actually, uh, you guys also do a, a Métis homecoming of sorts. Why don't you explain what, what that event includes? A Vosges Rendezvous 2017-150, because we are part of the big signature 150 event that's happening uh, all, all, all year long throughout Canada. Uh, but we're doing a, a Vosges Rendezvous um, uh, event as well as a Métis homecoming and uh, for that particular event the site will be transformed into a, a huge outdoor winter uh, winter uh, activity space so we'll have big top tents and on the main stage we'll have uh, traditional jigging and fiddling competitions so some of the best fiddlers and, and jiggers from all across North America will be coming uh, they'll be competing here we have some special guests coming some different cultural groups of dancing and fiddling and music from from all over Canada we have uh, a northern uh, performers coming from from the north from uh, to do the northern games Inuit games and they'll be demonstrating the the high kick and traditional games of, of the north um, we'll have lots of tents set up with artisans in it we'll have dog sleigh rides through the area here where people can get on a dog sleigh and, and, and go with your dog sleigh there'll be horse and, and, and sleigh rides there'll be tractor and wagon rides our Métis local 845 will be doing the traditional bison stew and bannock so you can purchase some bison stew and bannock uh, we have an outdoor stage that will be featuring uh, a number of different performers. Now you've already mentioned Canada Day which is big here and you've also mentioned the Métis Homecoming. Is there anything else that the Rocky Mountain House National Historic Site is uh, getting ready for to celebrate Canada's 150? Well, we're getting ready for the big signature 150 event that uh, that we're hosting here in the town of Rocky Mountain House, and the, Ro the National Historic Site is part of that. It'll start the week of June 21st. There will be all kinds of activities on site. Uh, it's a it's a rendezvous one uh, a rendezvous 150 event. So it's Voyager canoes from across the country, teams from across the country will be coming here to compete in a co uh, competitive uh, Voyager canoe competition where they leave Rocky Mountain House and they'll paddle to the Paw Manitoba. It'll take them 23 days. They leave Rocky Mountain House here on, Ju on July 1st and they head for the Paw Manitoba, stopping all along the river at different communities as well to participate in different events. But the events here, the gathering here from the 20th will be in the town of Rocky Mountain House, will be here on the site. The competitive teams will camp here, they'll stay here. There will be paddling school uh, programs set up, all kinds of opportunities to interact with uh, the, the new teams that are coming in as well as the some of the paddlers from 1967. And nine, it, what we're doing is a commemoration the 1967 race. So with the 100th centennial of, uh, of Canada, there was a race that left Rocky Mountain House and went to Montreal. Um, there were 10 provinces and territories who competed in that particular competition. Well, we're commemorating that race now, but instead of going all the way to Montreal, we're going to the Palm Manitoba. But Team Alberta still has original paddlers from that team. So you know, people will have an opportunity to interact and engage with those paddlers as well, because a number of them will be here on site during that time to do uh, interactions and have opportunities to meet with people as well. Now speaking of summer, when does this National Historic Site technically open for the summer season? So we open on May 10th and we're open seven days a week right until the end of September. Now what do you personally love about the job that you have here? It's quite the unique uh, office I have to say. Yeah, who, uh, who else can do an interview <laughs> outside here with some interpreters? Uh, you know, beautiful fire going. You're outside on site. The site is a large site, great walking trails. It's the, it's the landscape as well. Um, it's beautiful here. You're right along the river. You're close to the town of Rocky Mountain House. I mean, it's a wonderful Clearwater County. It goes to the David Thompson Highway and out. So the, the site here, lends, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful setting. And, and I just love being out. I, can, I don't have to sit in front of my computer every day. Our program, I, my work happens here on site. More people who come when visitors come, we have the opportunity to engage and, and, and work with them and people have fantastic, wonderful experiences here. Wow. Well, thank you so much for your time, Greg, and I hope everyone has the chance to head out to Rocky Mountain House and celebrate Canada's 150 at some point in the year. 
Well, that's all the time we have for Where You Live here in Rocky Mountain House. If you would like to learn more about anything we discussed in today's episode, you can head to the website on your screen. And if you'd like to stay up to date on what's going on with Where You Live and to suggest new communities for us to visit in central Alberta, check out Shaw TV Red Deer on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And to catch up on old episodes of Where You Live, head to our YouTube channel. I've been your host, Chloe Hoffner. Thanks for watching.